CBS 8's Jenny Day. Welcome to Around San Diego. I'll get you caught up on a week's worth of news and look ahead in just 30 minutes. We begin with your money. San Diegans are starting to get their SDG&E bills this month and many are stunned at what they're seeing. The good news though, there may be relief coming. The power company announced natural gas prices are dropping by 68%, hopefully bringing cheaper bills. But Shannon Handy is finding out that's doing little to ease frustration. Here she is working for you. That price drop will be reflected in your February bill. That's the good news. The bad news, I spoke with customers who say they're still trying to catch up from January when bills were the highest they've ever seen. I think it's welcome news. That welcome news says SGG &E spokesperson Anthony Wagner is starting February 1st. The price of natural gas is dropping by 68%. The gas rate for our San Diego Gas and Electric customers went from $5.11 in January to $2.77 in February. So what will that look like on your bill? Wagner told me the typical residential customer's gas bill is expected to decrease to $110 in February from $225 in January. This price drop is a result of changes in the market. By law, SCG &E sells gas for what they buy it for. But as a lot of our viewers have pointed out, natural gas prices have been dropping for some time. Why didn't we see discounts prior to February 1st? In the state of California, uh, utilities buy their gas in certain windows. San Diego Gas and Electric purchases gas for the whole month uh, at the end of the previous month. In other words, there's a delay from when SCG &E buys gas to when they sell it to you. Wagner doesn't expect the price will jump back up in March since demand isn't as high during warmer months. So not everyone is pleased. Does that ease any of your frustrations? No, because I know how easily they can raise it again. Margaret Espiritu is one of several CBSA viewers sharing their bills and anger towards the utility company. This month, the 90-year-old who lives alone on a fixed income is paying more than $340. And what is it normally? Half that. I feel like I'm being gouged. Reluctantly, she plans to pay the bill in full, but there's a lot of people who aren't able to. I asked Wagner what their options are. What exactly are you doing for those customers who can't afford their January bills? There's multiple tools available. I'll start with the ones that are income qualified. So care customers can receive as much as 30% discount on their bill. There's also state programs as well as nonprofits SGG &E is working with who may be able to provide direct bill relief. We get that customers are frustrated. Customers that are struggling to pay their bill reach out to us. We'll partner with you in a tailored solution and you don't have to get through this alone. If you'd like more information on those programs that may be able to help, just log on to CBS8.com and click on this story. Working for you, I'm Shannon Handy for CBS8. Shannon, thanks. And another top story this week, Chula Vista has a new city council member who was not elected by voters. City leaders gathered Tuesday night and filled a vacant seat for District 3 after interviewing all of the candidates from last week's meeting. The city has appointed Alonso Gonzalez, a former land use policy analyst. Item carries 3-1 uh, with Mayor McCann voting no. Please swear that I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. Yeah, and um, the mayor there, John McCann, did motion for a special election before other leaders could consider appointing a candidate, but his motion failed. Well, homeowners in Tierra Santa are scrambling to find options after Farmers Insurance canceled the property insurance for their community, citing wildfire concerns. Farmers had covered all 320 units at that complex. That equated to $127 million in property damages at a cost of $130,000 a year. The replacement policy will only cover $47 million in damages and cost more than $2 million per year, according to COA documents. Many homeowners are taking the situation into their own hands. There's a number of homeowners that have great ideas on insuring our own properties. Um, I've actually already gotten insurance for my home. A vote is expected that would allow the COA to shift the insurance responsibility from the association to each individual homeowner. 
Well, the week started with wind, rain and even snow fell in Far East County. On Monday, many people packed into their cars and headed to higher elevations to see the snow in Mount Laguna. It was an exciting time for those who visited, hoping to catch a rare sight that most San Diegans living away from those mountains sure, certainly don't see every day. Blankets of snow covered every part of the area. And a small nonprofit out of Del Mar says the town is losing more trees than are being planted. On top of that, all of the rain gave new life to invasive plants that steal precious resources from our native plants. CBS 8's Anna Laurel has more from native Del Mar and shows us how they're trying to clean up after the storms. I'm here in the Del Mar Canyon Preserve. This is the walking trail path that's just north of Torrey Pines State Park that leads into Del Mar. And just like all over town, there are Torrey pine trees here that the storms have tried to blow over. But this weekend, you have a chance to help fix these trees and even add more. And I'm sort of just trying my best to show what these native plants look like in unison and how this environment could really be so beautiful. 16-year-old Tyden Chanowski is trying to make one of arguably the most beautiful places in San Diego even better. With the help of his family and volunteers, he's creating walkable gardens with hundreds of native plants overlooking Torrey Pines State Park and Del Mar. We try to create this like synergetic vibe between all these plants where they all rely on each other in a sort of like one ecosystem. Oh, y'all did this? Yeah, we, we did everything around this, this area. This is great. Yeah. Here's a picture of what this area looked like three years ago before Titan created his nonprofit organization, Native Del Mar. Here it is now. You can obviously see the big difference between we've implemented soil, plants, and if, if you go a little bit further, some boulders. Whereas there, it's just sort of bare and sort of empty. Several years ago, native Del Mar even planted Torrey pines, but they were no match for recent rain and windstorms. And it's not just the new Torrey pines here. This is a 50-year-old tree the wind knocked down near Titan's house. So this weekend, native Del Mar is hosting another planting day. They'll plant dozens of native plants and try to straighten the trees the wind pushed over. This recent storm has just made the soil so loose and the wind has just blown it over again. I found out about native Del Mar through a nonprofit organization you might have seen here on CBS 8 called WIT. That's whatever it takes. Help young people activate an entrepreneurial mindset. Titan says WIT helped him grow his small nonprofit into something with a social media following, a legit website, and a movement that's making real change on the San Diego coast. Sunday's Volunteer Day starts at 9 a.m. at the Del Mar Canyon Preserve. In Del Mar, this is Anna Laurel for CBS 8. Anna, thank you. Well, now to COVID. More than three years after it was first put in place, the COVID public health emergency at the federal level will come to an end on May 11th. The White House made the announcement on Monday with COVID case rates declining and treatment options available coast to coast. This COVID public health emergency has allowed the federal government to provide free COVID tests, treatments, and vaccines for most Americans. Once the public health emergency ends, some people may have to start paying, at least partially, for some of these items, such as Paxlovid, used to treat moderate to severe COVID cases. Now it's free for everybody. If you have infection and prescription, you go to the pharmacy, and regardless of your insurance status, you can get the medication. That medicine probably, uh, it's not going to be free like that. Yeah, a separate COVID national emergency, which allowed FEMA and the Pentagon to help deploy medical supplies and vaccines, will also end on May 11th, according to the White House. Well, a cruise line is donating $450,000 to help Ukraine. Holland America Line has spent the past 10 months holding 5K fundraisers aboard its ships. This money is going to Direct Relief, a California-based nonprofit. That charity provides medical resources, and that is requested by the Ukrainian Health Ministry. An executive with Holland America told us that a lot of their crew members are from Ukraine, and they feel a sense of pride that their industry is working to help their home country. Well, there's growing concern right now about the number of people injured or even killed while trying to cross the border. According to the Consulate General of Mexico in San Diego, 42 Mexican nationals died while trying to cross the border illegally just last year. The majority were injured, falling off of the border wall. The Consulate General says people need to know just how dangerous it is. We think that <clears throat> Migrants are being sometimes misled by people who convince them that it is easy and non-dangerous to cross the border uh, between ports of entry. 
Yeah, the consulate general says the injuries and deaths from the border wall falls have increased after the height of the wall in some places was raised from 17 feet to 30 feet. Well, motorcycle officers with the San Diego Police Department debuted a new look on Tuesday. 30 new Kevlar uniforms. SDPD says the uniforms are more resistant to tears because they are 15,000 times stronger than traditional police uniforms. So they will better protect the officers in case of an accident. Our traditional motor uniform has been around for decades. Uh, our uniform hasn't really progressed at all as new fabrics come out, uh, new motorcycle boots come out. Uh, yeah, each officer will receive two pairs of pants, two shirts, a jacket and boots that are expected to last five years. The Kevlar uniforms are custom made at a price of about $3,100. San Diego Unified students are missing school at a dramatically growing rate. Many students are now considered chronically absent. The district points to sickness, mental health, housing and food insecurities, lack of transportation as well and inflation as the causes. This school year, 36.7% of San Diego Unified students have been chronically absent, according to the California School Dashboard. A local psychiatrist isn't surprised by the situation. I do hear parents, you know, casually tell me, you know, my kid's not going to school as much. And I ask why, because I don't think there's any real good reason for that. Yeah, he says some parents are keeping kids home for mental health days, but the best thing to do is seek help from a professional or school guidance counselor. Well, the numbers are truly shocking. Heart disease and stroke continue to be the leading cause of death for women every year in the United States. During the month of February, CBS 8 has partnered with the American Heart Association to go red for women. We are all wearing red to bring awareness so that women can know their numbers and protect their health. Our Heather Myers had a chance to talk to a local woman who is only 27 years old and showing signs of a stroke. She almost walked out of a health clinic before the doctor on site told her to go straight to the hospital. I love our time together as we start each happy day. With her brand new baby boy in her arms, 31 year old Brittany Whiteman can sit back and enjoy these precious moments. The journey to get here to be able to hold her son has been long and tough. I would go for a walk around the block during my lunch break and I noticed that I was scuffing my left foot. A few years ago at age 27 and during the height of COVID, the always athletic San Diegan noticed her left foot was dragging. A few days later, her left hand was weakening. I was trying to apply mascara with my left hand to, um, to my eyes and my hand was shaking. Brittany decided to go to a walk-in sports medicine clinic and almost left when she was told the copay would be $300. But the doctor came out to the waiting room concerned and told Brittany to go straight to the hospital. And I said, well, you know, how serious is this? And she said, do you have a friend that can drive you? After a CAT scan and MRI, doctors were stunned to learn that the longtime runner had a brain bleed and a stroke. Over the next week in the hospital, the use of her left side quickly deteriorated and there was no choice but brain surgery. There was a lot of panic and fear of, you know, am, is the surgery going to be successful? Am, am I going to wake up from this? I mean, there was a lot of real fear and, um, you know, talking with my then boyfriend at the time of, you know, what, what happens? What does, what does this mean for us? The surgery was a success. A few days later, Brittany was sent home, unable to walk. Her boyfriend, Scott, who was about to be deployed, helped her with even the most simple tasks. He bathed me, he brushed my hair, he changed me, tied my shoes, you know, got me dressed in the day, cooked for me, cut my food. Um, I mean, he did absolutely everything. When Scott left on deployment, Brittany's parents stepped in and months of physical therapy began. And so we're playing Scrabble and I'm trying to pick the Scrabble pieces up and put them back into the bag. And it is very uncoordinated. Cell phone video captured Brittany's remarkable road to recovery. Over the course of six months, she was able to regain her strength and the use of her left side. And by the time he came home, I was walking. Um, I wore these like little wedges to the airport to to pick them up. Plans were already in the works for a hike in Zion, a vacation and ultimately an engagement. 
On their wedding day, Brittany's goal was to be able to wear heels and dance with her new husband. I had a big ball gown dress. I felt like Cinderella. Uh, my husband was in his military uniform, so it truly felt like, you know, Prince Charming. It's been a long road for Brittany and Scott. The simple tasks of going for a walk, pushing a stroller, the ability to hold her infant son and read him a story, all mean so much more. I was motivated by, you know, the hope of having kids one day that, um, you know, I would be able to play with them and, uh, you know, live a, a relatively normal life. Thanks to our Heather Myers there and the American Heart Association Association, excuse me, says that learning CPR is something everyone can do to help fight against heart disease. In only two minutes, you can learn hands on CPR to do that. Go to heart.org and for more information about heart disease and strokes in women, go to go red for well, now that we are in the month of February, an official Black Lives Matter flag is flying above the San Diego Unified District quarters. District officials, students and teachers gathered outside of the district building to raise the flag during a ceremony. The raising of the flag marks the beginning of Black History Month. The flag will be up until the end of February. And this is cool. San Diego Museum Month is back for the 34th year in a row. That means that 60 museums and other destinations across San Diego County will have half off admission. Here are some of the participating locations, and there are so many more that we don't have shown here. So if you do want a full list, head to San Diego Museum Council.org. Well, the road to recovery has started for the dog that fell in a well. All eyes were on that dog, Indy, for hours. Our eyes here at the station were glued to the feed as we all watched and waited for Indy to be hoisted out safely. The nine-year-old German Shepherd did not come out unscathed, though, but is being nursed back to health. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes reports. After falling more than 50 feet into what used to be a well, Indy is now on the men, but this is just the first step in the road to recovery for this nine year old German Shepherd who is also a former police canine. We met Indy here where he was medicated before going for an MRI. He's doing OK. He's uh, alert. He's uh, awake and he's uh, getting pain meds. He's had a surgery to, for a couple wounds. His blood works normal and good. He's he's trying to get up, but we've got to take him to get a MRI. This is Indy now. He's doing his best to feel better with lots of help from doctors after lots of help from firefighters and others who helped Indy finally get out of this hole that property owners didn't even know existed. Well, we were at this uh, place to let the dogs run free, both the shepherds. Uh, his sister's in the truck there right now. They were running around the grassy area and everything and running around up the hill and all of a sudden he just disappeared. He just, boop, and I heard him, you know, yelp and everything. And I went over to look, see where he was. I couldn't find him. Then I almost fell in the hole. The hole was covered over with a bunch of growth and vines and stuff. You couldn't see it unless you were looking for it. It was three, three and a half foot wide. Uh, old abandoned well, it looked like. Uh, big opening up front. But now as Indy starts his recovery, he's going to need a few more trips to the doctor before he's back up and running like before. Andy's dad is a bit worried, but he and all of San Diego has hope. He's wounds to heal up, yeah, MRI that. and a neurologist for his back injury and hips, and we go from there. Kirsten Holmes, CBS 8. Go. <sighs> it was wild to watch. I'm so glad he's doing okay. Well, if you love cats, cocktails, wine, and food, there's a new kitty cafe that may be perfect for you in the Zevely Zone. Jeff heads to North Park, where date night just got a lot more interesting. For a North Park husband and wife, every day starts with a short walk to work. Nicole and Chris Smith strut their way to a bold new business idea they just had to sink their claws into called Whiskers and Wine. Whose idea was this? I was in corporate America HR for over 22 years. Mm, that sounds really boring. If a cat gets nine lives, Nicole and Chris figured, why couldn't they create a second? Who's a bigger cat lover here? <laughs> well, it's definitely her, but... Uh... I'm the crazy cat lady. Who else would spend three years building a business that combines a full restaurant and a bar with cat adoptions? Wait, 
wine and cats, okay, two of my favorite things, tell me more. Brianne Youngberg from the nonprofit Cat Rescue Saving One Life partners with Whiskers and Wine. So this is Moonbeam. This is one of our uh, available felines and looking for a forever home. After paying a $30 reservation fee, guests climb to not a patio, but the catio. And around here, they sip not a whiskey sour, but a whiskey meow. Put this place into words for our viewers. Oh my gosh. Well, I live just a couple blocks away and I've been waiting for this place to open for a couple of years. So much so that when Alex's sister Anna visited from New York City, they booked a dinner date with new friends. They are independent and maybe wise. Since opening last August, 80 of these cats have been adopted. Do you have your eye on a cat? All of them are very cute. This is the first time. I have my eye on, my eye on all of them. Nicole and Brooke have ever come to a bar to hit on Tom cats. I should just be like, I have a rug you can poop on and some catnip at home. Yeah, cat pot over. <laughs> right? I think you need to work on that line just a little bit. I tried. <laughs> Whiskers and Wine might just be America's only fully licensed cat liquor lounge. Most cat cafes are focused on coffee, tea, a morning experience. This place is all about the nightlife, except on Saturday and Sunday mornings when they stretch it out with cat yoga. We basically say this is a cat resort, we're just their guests. So if you're looking for the coolest of all date nights, <laughs> Cocktails and cats. Yes, yes, absolutely. My two favorite things. <laughs> the cats, officially. Oh, oh, oh. Out of the bag. I just can't get enough. <laughs> In the Zevely Zone. Better than corporate America? Yes. I'm very happy. <laughs> Jeff Zevely, CBS 8. <laughs> Love it. Whiskers and Wine is also looking for foster families and volunteers. For more information, visit the Zevely Zone on CBS8.com. Well, instead of leaving your dog at home all day while you go to work, you might consider sending your pet on a pink party bus. Jeff now rides along with Precious Pet Care. If you're a pet owner with a busy work week, We've got a door-to-door -door doggy service for you. We call it the magic pink bus. Johnny Madrid never gets tired of the looks. People tend to be a little flabbergasted at first. They're kind of like in shock, like what? A pink bus? All aboard. This is Moose. That is fire. We do half days and full days. Hello, Archie! Precious Pet Care started off as a side hustle for Layla Offner. I've always had a love for dogs. The former restaurant manager discovered dogs are just friendlier than people. First of all, they don't complain. <laughs> They're always happy to see you. For Layla, Hello, everyone. the feeling is mutual. Hello. Joey's their favorite. <laughs> Don't tell Joey that. It's, you know what I mean? We got to keep the head in, intact, you know what I mean? While Kate goes off to work, her dog will play. I'm a huge fan of Precious Pet Care. They might think Joey's their favorite. They're my favorite. <laughs> so we got Moses next, right? Yeah. Moses and Harry. Hi, guys. Hello. Pet owner Mary Jo tries not to get her feelings hurt. Well, the minute they saw him, they're like, oh, there's Layla and Johnny and the guys and girls. It's like our pals, so it's their, they know exactly what they're going to do. Come on, buddy. They're ready. It's our job to rescue them, you know? We can't have them be too lonely for too long. From La Jolla to Mira Mesa. Is this a job or is this just fun? Uh, I think it's mostly fun. There's only one rule on the pink bus, and that's every dog wears a puppy belt. Hi, Ruby! Hi. This is her favorite part of the week, and whenever she sees the bus roll up, she's just squealing with joy. 14 passengers. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, Is the magic seven, eight, pink nine, bus record. 10, 11. But throw in their baby. <laughs> Luna loves it, as you could tell. And 
a reporter. You're not allowed to make out in the back of the bus, right? <laughs> At least that's the way it was in elementary school. <laughs> 13 passengers were having so much fun, we almost <laughs> forgot our final stop was Pet Paradise. And after the bus ride, the pet care begins. In the Zevely Zone, <laughs> Jeff Zevely, CBS 8 both dogs and cats, we have something for everyone. Well, he died more than 3,000 years ago, but King Tut is roaring back to life in Del Mar. Beyond King Tut, the immersive experience is just as dazzling as the treasures found in Tut's tomb. Our Brian White is at the fairgrounds for a closer look. A multi-sensory experience that will take you on a time-traveling adventure over 3,000 years ago to ancient Egypt. On this, the 100th anniversary of the discovery of King Tut's tomb, the producers of Beyond Van Gogh are bringing us a new immersive experience into the world of the Golden King like never before. You know, King Tut's tomb was actually a very small tomb. It only had four rooms. Mark Locke is the creative producer, and he led me on a tour through multiple galleries representing the four rooms of King Tut's tomb. This room in the exhibition represents the burial chamber. It was the only room with the painted walls and as you can look around this room now these walls have come alive. In the center of the burial chamber was a stone sarcophagus and inside that three interlocking coffins the last being solid gold holding the mummy of King Tut. One of the coolest things I saw were these digital displays embedded in the wall featuring old National Geographic photos that have now been colorized. They're so vivid it's like having a window into the tomb itself. One of my favorites is this image, this photograph of a little game that Tut played as a child. It's called Senate. And in this gallery also in the middle of the room, we've made it large so that families can play the same game that Tutankhamun played. From King Tut's family tree to the artifacts found in his tomb, you can even sit in a replica of his throne. Next up on the tour, the giant immersive room where everything comes to life all around you. Here in the immersive room, the artifacts come alive. The gold mask rises above you. The exhibition opens to the public Friday and runs through March 26. Adult tickets are $44 each and children cost $27 apiece. Once you're done, you can even pose for your own National Geographic cover. And just when you think it's over, there's more. At the end of the exhibition, you can enter Tut's tomb virtually. At the Del Mar Fairgrounds, Brian White, CBS 8. Well, you know it, people have been scrambling for eggs lately, and with the threat of the bird flu in the air, many are worried that the current shortage could get even worse. As egg prices go up, many local animal and feed stores have been getting calls from people curious about raising their own chicks so that they can have their own eggs. CBS 8's Netta Iranpour shows us what it really takes in this Earth 8 report. Come here. <laughs> Emily Wadi has had these three chickens and a duck for about two and a half years. Originally we got them because it was COVID and I just looked up things on Pinterest, what you can do in the backyard, how to make a brooding box, and it was just something to do kind of while I was working at home. Now there's a peaked interest in backyard chickens because of the nationwide egg shortage, resulting in high prices and even empty store shelves. Sometimes we have an abundance and then Every event we go to, there's going to be deviled eggs or egg salad because we have a lot. These chickens result in baskets full of delicious eggs. My bird's eggs were so much larger and so much brighter than the other eggs that were even cage free. And as we watch Emily's chickens in their coop, you could say they have it made. They even have a heat lamp during the winter. People say chickens will eat anything you give them. Um, that's not true. They like blackberries, but not strawberries. They like cooked quinoa, but not raw quinoa. Their favorite foods are watermelon and cucumber. If I bring out either of those foods, they just go ballistic. But they do require some patience and like any committed relationship, getting to know each other. I think the thing that surprised me the most was their personalities. Emily checks on them daily, provides food, water, and plenty of space. I'm an animal person, so I don't think that it's okay to get an animal not knowing what you're getting into. Come on. 
all these worms. And for that, we turn to the Agua Hedionda Lagoon Foundation in Carlsbad. Having chickens can be a real delight, uh, but it also comes with a, a good amount of work. So here we have Savannah. Samantha Passavoy is the Discovery Center manager here, and she points out having chickens does not mean a lifetime of free <laughs> eggs every day. So they don't start laying eggs until they're about six months old, and then they lay for only actually about two to four years before they uh, reduce their egg production. And then their production also definitely slows down in the wintertime, picks up in the summertime. <laughs> Here they serve as an educational tool. Hold out your hand flat like this. There you go. The kids love visiting them. Chickens can be such an engaging animal to interact with. They have this outdoor space where people can interact with them, and they take refuge in their coop to lay eggs or sleep. Quite the luxurious room, complete with a solar panel. They have protection from any predators and a newly installed heater. We use several different types of beddings. We use uh, a mixture of hay and wood shavings in the coop. While this all sounds pretty pricey to establish, at least now many people who put in the work to have chickens are saving some money on their eggs. Now, before you take on the task of having your own backyard chickens, it may be a good idea to come out here to the Agua Hedionda Lagoon. They always need volunteers in the morning and in the afternoons. And then on Wednesdays, they even have a chat about the chickens right here in this coop. For Earth Aid, I'm Netta Iranpour. Yeah, interesting and could be worth it right now. As always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for staying informed. If you're going to FanFest, go Padres. Join me each week as I take you around San Diego. For CBS 8, I'm Jenny Dave. Take good care of yourself.